Firstly, I'm really delighted that Jimmy Wales is going to be joining us and I'm going to be asking Jimmy some questions about Wikipedia and his feelings on this really special anniversary. Then there'll be a short break of probably around 10 minutes when you can either refill your glasses or join in the Blue Links game for which you just need to have access to Wikipedia, which I hear is, is free. Um, and after that, we'll be hearing some lightning talks from a range of speakers who can share their own perspectives on Wikipedia and on the wider um, work of the Wikimedia movement and community. We actually have six talks lined up, which is fantastic. They're only five minutes each, but we will take a short five minute break halfway between those um, just to give everyone a chance to, to regroup and go and uh, charge their glasses or take a comfort break. Um, and I'd really like to thank all of the speakers in advance for agreeing to share their insight at this event. And I'm looking forward to hearing from everyone. While I'm thanking people, I want to acknowledge the fact that everyone here today on this call has contributed personally to the success of Wikipedia, um, either as an editor, and there'll be people on this call who have hundreds of thousands of edits to their name, um, others who've supported the project financially through donations either to Wikimedia UK, um, the UK-based charity, or um, the Wikimedia Foundation in the United States. Um, whatever your contribution, um, you know, staff member, volunteer, uh, someone who's a partner, someone who's a member, or just who's an interested reader and decided to join us tonight, I'd really like to thank you for making this possible, as I think we can be sure that Wikipedia wouldn't be what it is without the involvement and commitment of all of you. So, as promised, I'm kicking off today's celebrations with a short interview with Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. Um, so I'm hope, I know that he's here, I've seen him come in, I hope he's unmuted. Um, for those of you who are new to Zoom, it's worth noting that there are different view settings, um, usually on the top right. You can have a gallery view, which is where you have lots of small faces, um, or you can change it to something, I think it says something like speaker view. And that's probably the best one to use if you want to be able to see Jimmy and the other speakers as well as hear them. So I'm just going to um, go back into my, and so I can see all the faces. And in fact, I've got it on gallery view, so I'm gonna put it on speaker view. Um, and if you are um, unmuted Hello. now, then you might appear. So yay, Jimmy, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Minor, these minor, minor hiccups. Thank you so much for joining us and I, and particularly today because I know that you've been much in demand today on the radio mm. and I've just heard you speak obviously at the Wikimedia Foundation party um, and uh, hopefully it's a, it's a really nice thing to be yes. you know, to talk mm -hmm. about but you'll probably be uh, deserving a glass of wine after all this but, um, mm -hmm. but thank you for joining us um, and I wanted to ask you firstly uh, what you're most proud of um, when you think about Wikipedia turning 20. Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, obviously we've had a, a huge impact on the world and uh, in these, you know, difficult times when a lot of social media platforms are coming under fire for, uh, you know, being toxic and bad for the world, um, we are increasingly viewed as something that's beneficial and good, uh, which is wonderful. Uh, but for me, I think that what I'm most proud of is the the this community, right? That we've built a community, and I don't mean I built a community, I mean we built a community um, of people who are earning that respect, um, who, you know, all around the world, people come to Wikipedia and, and they say, wow, this is amazing. Like, who who made this, right? Well, we made it. And there you go, it's a gift. And, and, and that's really fantastic. Thank you. I mean, I completely agree. I'm always blown away by um, just the huge contribution that, that volunteers make. When thinking back 20 years ago, um, do you think that you had any idea of how of how big it was going to become and also how essential it was going to become to people's lives? Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting because I, I always say I'm a pathological optimist, so I think everything is great. And I, I thought this was going to be a big, uh, a big thing and a, and a big idea. Um, but it's difficult at the beginning to really understand what it would mean to be a part of the infrastructure of the world as we are. You know, if you think about, uh, you know, just one aspect of it, which is uh, the digital voice assistance. And, you know, uh, if you ask Siri a question or, or Amazon Alexa a question, they, they all know the answer, but they got it from us, you know, and that's part of the infrastructure of the world. And mm -hmm. obviously people are relying on us um, every day in so many different ways and contexts and so forth that 
that I never thought of. I never anticipated that. You know, I just, you know, if you, if you think, oh, oh, we can maybe make a website and it'll be cool. And I would love to have an encyclopedia. And then as it was starting to grow, thinking, oh, this could be really popular. That's cool. Yeah. So, but popular website doesn't quite sort of capture. I don't think how, it quite covers it, does it? <laughs> you know, how, how much of an impact we've had. I agree. And when I was thinking about these questions, I, I nearly used the word ubiquitous. And then I thought, you know, sometimes that has slight negative connotations, but I think it really is ubiquitous. Mm. So I think about, mm. um, I mean, I have two quite young children, but I also have two stepsons, one of whom um, is uh, was born in um, 2000. So he's grown up with Wikipedia, which mm. is absolutely sort of um, concurrent with his, with his life. And I think he would say, he can't imagine actually navigating the world and information and the information ecosystem without it. Um, is there anything you'd do differently if you had the chance, do you think? Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously at various times things went wrong or things we could have done better at, at various times. But on the other hand, I, I always think if you're proceeding in good faith and you're, and you're being thoughtful and methodical, uh, it's kind of hard to regret much the, the, the wrong paths you took, but you did the best you could at that moment in time. And it hasn't been terrible, uh, you know, like there, there's definitely been friction here and there and things that could have been better. But in general, we've made our, our way through it. And, and part of it, I think, is because we do have uh, this fundamental concept uh, in the community of assume good faith, yeah. which we sometimes forget in the heat of dialogue and discussion and debate and so on. But in general, we come back to that. And, and so I think that really helps a lot. I completely agree. Um, and sort of thinking about that and the, the 20 years and all that's gone well and all that's, um, uh, all that's happened in that time, um, what are your hopes, do you think, for the next 20 years for Wikipedia, but also for the wider family of Wikimedia projects and the wider community? I'm sorry, I, I missed a couple of sorry. words there, sorry. Um, just thinking about the next 20 years. Mm. You know, when, when, when I'm asking you this question, yes. probably not me, uh, but, but we'll still be you. Um, when someone's asking you in 2041, <laughs> you know, uh, yes. what you're so proud of, you know, what, what are your hopes for the next 20 years um, for Wikipedia and for yeah. the Wikimedia movement? Yeah, yeah, great. So, I mean, I think the, the for me, the, the biggest things uh, are going to be the growth of Wikipedia in the languages of the developing world. I think that's crucially important. And when we think about, uh, you know, the, the, the original vision, you know, imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. Well, that means every single person on the planet, right? So we've got a long way to go in a lot of places in the world. Um, and that's really huge and really important. Uh, but also, you know, I think our quality will continue to improve uh, in the in the world of other languages. I hope that the software will become easier to use uh, and all that. But I also really hope uh, that we will, just as we have for 20 years now, stay true to our original core values. The idea that we are, uh, you know, a volunteer community writing an encyclopedia to give to the world as a free gift. Uh, with no paywall, no ads, you know, all of that, all of the basics, right? But also adhering uh, still very strongly to neutral point of view, uh, you know, to having uh, more so than we have had in the past, a diverse community. I think that is a goal that we have. Um, you know, there's a great spirit and desire in the community to be open and welcoming to all kinds of people, but uh, there's challenges in that. Uh, we haven't always done it as well as we should. Um, there's challenges that don't come from Wikipedia, but are part of the outside world that we live in that we need to not just accept as, oh, well, you know, that's just the way people are. Say, no, no, actually we can have an impact. We can say, bring people in, invite them in, actively make it happen. So that's for me, the 20, 20 years goal. Well, that, that sounds pretty inspiring to me. Um, on that note, um, I did wonder, given that this is build, we build this as a party and not a conference. Um, I <laughs> certainly have a glass of wine, um, Ooh, and it's it's very much bring your own bottle. I'm sorry, um, but I did wonder if you wanted maybe Jimmy to propose a little toast. Oh I, yes, if I had only known, I was just. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just going to go open a bottle in a minute, but uh, uh -huh. yes, a toast. So, hip hip hooray to Wikipedia and the Wikipedians.
and the Wikimedians, everybody. All and of us. Wikipedians. Oh, Thank yay. you so much, Jimmy. Hmm. Thank you. Lovely. And I'm actually taking the time to drink. This is not for shame. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jimmy. I really, really appreciate Thank you. Your time. Right. I'm going to go now. I'm going to go open a bottle. Have that bottle. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers. Great. Bye -bye. Lovely. Cheers. Bye. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to change my view back now. So, uh, to I think um, I think it might have been Rob Nelson who asked earlier about who founded Wikipedia, and I think it's really great to have Jimmy on on the call to share uh, that insight and what he's proud of and what he's looking forward to. We um, I think we're running to time, which is excellent, and um, we're going to have a little break now. I know it feels quite early, but. Um, uh, Katie Crampton, my colleague um, there, is going to be running a Wikipe Wikipedia online game. So for those of you who want to stay, um, get in on the, on the action, um, I won't because my colleagues know that I'm far too competitive and it would just not be uh, decorous. Um, but I, I will uh, uh, head, hand over to Katie, but just to say that at five, maybe in 10 minutes time, we'll be starting our fantastic lightning talks from people talking about the past and present and future of Wikipedia. So do stick around, um, over to Katie. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, so as Lucy said, you're very welcome to go get a drink. You don't have to participate in this game if you don't want to. Um, if you've seen the, uh, if you attended our AGM, you might be familiar with the Blue Links game. I think it's played a, a lot of um, Wikipedia events. Basically, all it is is you have to have Wikipedia open. I'll give everybody a moment to do that. And then Wig, I'm gonna give you a starting point and an end point that you have to go get for get from. So if we all go to Wikipedia together, you'll see on the homepage, today's featured article is the mercenary war, also known as the truthless war. If you can get from that page on the mercenary war over to the page on Franz Kafka, then, and um, if whoever gets there first, jump, either put it in the chat or unmute yourself and shout. So go now. <laughs> okay. Obviously there are no prizes for this game <laughs> other than congratulations. Oh, Charlie, are you already there? That's quite impressive. If... I was uh, well. As soon, I was typing in Franz Kafka as you were. You know, once you started saying Franz Kafka, I just typed, typed it in. Right. Okay. So the the hope with this game is that purely through the blue links, if ah, you can get. Right. <laughs> I was on the wrong page to start with. I I, I mine. I just had the globe. So. <gasps> Brilliant. The. Um... If you can get back from Franz Kafka, Kafka to the Mercenary War, also known as the Truceless War, was a mutiny by troops employed by Carthage at the end of the First Punic War. If you can get there purely through the Blue Links. Right. I need. Uh, I missed the. I missed the start. Was the problem? Um, uh, I, I, I was on the wrong page. I just had a globe with the languages showing when I went to the start. Thank you, Peter, for dropping the start page. Maybe I should do that. I should probably just drop it in the chat to make yeah. it easier rather than asking everybody get to go to the Wikipedia homepage. Oh, Caroline Ball got there. <laughs> Fantastic, Caroline. That was really good. Richard's got as far as Nietzsche. That's pretty quick. Caroline, do you want to tell us how you did it or are you keeping your secrets for the next round? Yeah, no problem. I'll uh, I'll say how I did it. So I started on the uh, Mercenary War um, article, and then I clicked on a link for Ancient Carthage, um, and then I clicked on a link for I don't even know how to pronounce this, Penalus, um, which was a Latin comedic play, <laughs> okay. which took me to the page for um, play um, brackets theatre. Um, from there, I went to drama, um, and then Emil Zola and then Nobel Prize in Literature, um, and then Kafka. Brilliant. So that was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six clicks. Fantastic. Well, well, you see, I'm getting very strange bits happening. 
<laughs> I'm picking, I'm mainly picking pages from the home page, but um, the next link is going to be from dropped in the chat. I shouldn't have picked a link that I can't pronounce the name of, but here we go. Fontevraud Abbey, <laughs> the Royal Abbey of Our Lady of Fontevraud or something in French, basically. If we can get from that to um, the, the British Museum. <laughs> It's all gone quiet. Everybody's competitive streak get coming out. Complete silence. Yes, Lorna, this is why Caroline is Wikimedia UK's Oh, Peter. Oh, Lucy, one step behind. Peter, oh, we've got <laughs> people are getting their cricket with this one. Um, but I think Peter was the first to drop it in the chat. Peter, do you want to explain how you got to us? Or are you keeping your secrets? Um, yeah, sorry, Lucy. Um, <laughs> I went, clicked on World Heritage Site and then Metropolitan Museum of Art was on there somewhere. And then just a list of most visited art museums and then British Museum. Fantastic. Cool. So we'll... a much more direct route than mine, I have to confess. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up in cultural heritage and then conservation mm -hmm. and then um, and then museum collections and then museums and then the British Museum. So I think Peter definitely deserves that one. Yeah. Shall we do one more or shall we go to lightning speakers? One more, okay. Let's do from Machu Picchu. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat again. Give everybody a moment to get onto that page. Then if you can get to the constellation of Orion, go ahead. That's as in the star system, Orion's belt. Alex has got there, amazing. That was, I didn't expect that. I expected more time for that one. I don't know why <laughs> that was, um, I felt more challenging. Oh, and Martin's there as well, fantastic. I'm curious if you... Um, I don't know what is the, I think that's the whole kind of point of the Blue Lynx game. <laughs> How Blue Lynxable are they, Richard? Um, Yes, Alex, do you want to explain how you got there? You don't have to speak if you don't want to, but yeah, please. Uh, can, can, can you hear me? I can, we can, yes. Okay, yes, yeah. so on the Machu Picchu page, there's a Temple of the Sun section, and then in that paragraph, there's Inca constellation link. And then if you go there, on that page, which is the constellation page, you can click directly to Orion. So it's two clicks. Fantastic. But really very impressive. I honestly did not expect that one to be as few clicks as that. Fantastic. I'm going to pass. I guess, I guess the Incans had astronomy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to pass back to Lucy now um, so she can uh, host our lightning speakers. Thanks everybody for taking part in the game. Thank you, Katie. I'm all fired up now. <laughs> 
because I, against my better judgment, I participated. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed that. Um, I think everybody who's on this call will be aware of just how incredibly uh, well linked and complex Wiki a resource Wikipedia is. But for me, that game always really illustrates that incredibly um, well, um, just how you can get to these to these different pieces of information. So, um, and it's also a bit of fun. So um, we're now gonna move on to the lightning talks, um, which really is the heart of, of this event, hearing from Wikipedians, Wikimedians, uh, people who are volunteering in some cases in a staff capacity to develop open knowledge um, and to grow the content and contributors on Wikimedia. So I'm really excited about the speakers that we've got. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't, um, because there are so many, it's difficult for me to actually to know that all the speakers are here, but a little nod maybe um, if, uh, Katie, if you're aware that our first speakers are here um, would be great, but if not, I shall announce them and there'll be a deathly awkward silence if they're not. Um, but the first people talking tonight are Doug Rox McQueen um, and Jeff Sanders from Dig It. Um, on a Wikimedian in Residency project at Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Um, and with no further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jeff and Doug. If you want to unmute yourselves and take the floor, then I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Hello, everybody. Um, I am here. Um, oh, hang on a second. Let me just. Uh, 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 hello, my name is Jeff Sanders. I work at an organisation that's 240 uh, years old, the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Um, and our key mission um, is to uh, engage people with the past and share um, uh, research and knowledge. And we do that in lots of different ways. We publish books and journals, we run events, we advocate um, for the importance of heritage and the difference that it can make to people's um, lives. And we run projects like Dig It, which is all about getting people involved with um, Scottish archaeology. Um, so what happened when we appointed Dr. Doug Rox McQueen um, as a Wikimedian in residence for, for one day a, a week with, with support from Wikimedia UK? Um, so over to you, Doug. I'm, I'm hoping you're there. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Excellent. Yeah, so um, my story actually starts almost eight years ago uh, with another Wikimedian in residence, uh, Pat Hadley, who was the Wikimedian in residence at um, York Museums. And I saw, I was at a conference uh, for archaeology, and I saw a presentation um, that he was giving, and it just blew my mind away. It was about how the reach of Wikipedia and he did this example about a TV show where you could look at it and you could see every time an episode aired, that article on Wikipedia would get like 10,000 views. Um, and this might just be for our area, but in archeology, span getting like 10,000 people to view something is, uh, is amazing. And it happened every week. Um, and so then we started, we were sort of blown away and we started this little thing called Wiki Club where we get together a couple of archeologists and we'd edit. Uh, Wikimedia articles and uh, you know Wikipedia. Uh, we sometimes upload photos, Wiki Commons, things like that. Um, and Jeff was one of the members of that. And eventually, uh, he managed to get together something to do a Wikimedia in residence at the Society. So I came in. Um, I've been there for about two years now, and it's been a great experience. We've I basically first year started out was talking to everyone in the Society, finding out how they operate and how we could integrate basically all the different sources on um, Wikimedia. So Wikipedia, Wikicommons, uh, Wikisource, anything like that. Um, and then out of that came a document um, in which we had 26 ideas. And I think we're about halfway through ha them right now of different projects and different things to do, of what the society could do to be more open with its knowledge and to be able to um, basically give back to the commons and the greater world with everything they could put on uh, Wikipedia, Wikicommons, Wikisource, all the different wikis. Um, so yeah, that's that's been our experience. Um, I hope it's been good. I believe Jeff is going to talk a little bit now about uh, the perspective from the society and what they gained out of it. Yep, in 40 seconds. Um, the residency has had a lot of direct impacts, editathons, training, um, and look out for our forthcoming Wikiversity version of our prestigious uh, Rhyme Lectures. 
Um, most importantly, though, it was enabling. Um, having Doug there helped us think about open access and Wikipedia when we do anything from project work to publishing to research events, even prizes that we give out. Um, and it helps that that impact is so measurable um, and so big. One of our editathons around women in Scottish archaeology um, resulted in 56,000 views um, in just over a month, which is huge um, for, for that topic and um, for us. Um, the residency has also helped us enshrine open access as a core value of the society. Um, you can uh, check out the wee link that Doug's um, uh, put up there, and we can maybe put it in the chat to actually our plan that he mentioned, um, an open future for the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland. Um, we're, we're doing all of it as we speak, um, and there's a lot more in there about what we're going to be doing um, next. So please do, if you're interested, have a look at the link, um, drop us a line. Thank you very much, and happy birthday, Wikipedia. Thank you so much, um, both of you. And also thank you for keeping to time. Um, I mean, I, I've had the privilege of reading some of your recent reports. So I'm so excited and pleased about what's been going on there, but thank you for sharing that at this event. Um, I'm going to move on swiftly to Hannah Rothman, who is going to be talking about her internship at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so I, again, I can't, I can't see that Hannah's here, but I'm, I'm hopeful she, that she is, and I'm gonna hand over to her now. Um, hi everyone, my name is Hannah and I'm currently in my final year studying classics at the University of Edinburgh and last summer I was the Wikimedia training intern at the University with Edinburgh's Wikimedian in residence Ewan McAndrew who is on this call and I helped to create training materials on Wikipedia, Wikidata and a website to host them. I contacted other Wikimedians across the UK to include their work on the website as we basically wanted to make a platform which collated new resources and all the impressive ones already out there. This in part was to help stop people going down a rabbit hole of blue links, something I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Before starting my internship, I didn't know much about Wikipedia. I'd obviously used it to settle arguments as a springboard for research and as a helping hand in some particularly difficult pub quizzes. However, I had never actually edited it myself. I also had not given much thought to where the information came from, how it was maintained, and what prompted people to edit. My attitude to Wikipedia was also affected by those around me. From school through to the start of my degree, I've been warned away from Wikipedia many times. My teachers and lecturers have told me it is untrustworthy and must be avoided at all costs. One lecturer even told us that Wikipedia could be edited by anyone and that this was proof enough to avoid it. Despite these warnings, myself and the majority of students I know use Wikipedia in some form. Therefore, universities and education systems need to acknowledge that Wikipedia plays an instrumental role for many students in their learning, and they need to recognize that it is not this big bad wolf leading their students astray. The University of Edinburgh is aware of this, as it was the first university in the UK to employ a university-wide Wikimedian in residence, Ewan McAndrew. Wikimedians in residence tend, or tended to, be situated in galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Many still think about Wikipedia as a way of sharing library collections and are wary of the dangers of consuming Wikipedia rather than what we can gain from a teaching and learning perspective. The residency at Edinburgh is geared to support sharing knowledge openly, developing information literacy and digital skills, and focusing on improving representation online and increasing the diversity of editors. This, along with the desire to make Wikipedia more transparent to the university community, drove the creation of our website. We decided to focus our edits on Wikipedia, Wikidata, and the ways that people can contribute after their initial attentive steps into the world of Wiki. Our first goal was to explain to people, especially students and staff, why they should become involved with Wikipedia and Wikidata. I think many do not realize that the goal of Wikipedia is to be the sum of all human knowledge and that people need to contribute to it for it to come even slightly near this impossible but noble goal. More importantly, the fact that anyone can edit Wikipedia is a positive and not a negative, as my anti-Wikipedia lecturer suggested. An idea of knowledge activism, as opposed to passive consumption, is inherent in the goal to get more people to contribute. Within universities, many staff and students are in excellent positions to contribute, improve and edit on articles. They can access resources, they have specific subject expertise, and with some persuasion, maybe a desire to improve Wikipedia. This could mean that they could be valuable editors and empowered knowledge activists. Subsections of our website include how to create an account, crucial for any wiki editing, how to edit, guidance around what you should be contributing, how to make an article, how to cite Wikipedia, and how to teach with Wikipedia. 
The part on teaching with Wikipedia was crucial to make as several university courses now include Wikipedia editing. It was through this that my sister, my twin, um, was won over to the world of Wiki. She took the Stars, Robots and Talismans Honours course run by Glair Anderson at the university who put editing Wikipedia in her course. My sister and others on her course had their perceptions of Wikipedia challenged. They had to confront their idea of Wikipedia as a place that is not intellectual and not trustworthy when they themselves were contributing their research. Their change in attitude shows me that with training and an explanation of what Wikipedia is really about, people can learn to appreciate a platform that many take for granted. Hopefully students will soon be able to receive an award, the Edinburgh Award, by undertaking 50 hours of wiki editing to improve, individually or in groups, whole areas of Wikipedia, such as Scotland's links with slavery, women in STEM, translation work and more. Our website also has a section on how to contribute to Wikipedia once people feel ready to start editing. Editathons are a great way to do this. As many of you know, this is an event where people come together to edit and create articles around a particular topic. Generally, it is also to address biases on Wikipedia. I had never heard of these events before my internship, and this is a shame considering how it is an easy way, in your own small way, to create some social justice. It is this aspect of Wikipedia and those who edit that exemplify everything good about the internet. It is astounding that Wikipedia has been with us for 20 years and in the current political climate, we can all do with some accessible, nonpartisan and free knowledge. Happy birthday, Wikipedia. Oh, thank you so much, Hannah. Um, I have to say, I hope you don't have any plans for this year because I've decided that you're going to be your very own roadshow and we're going to take you to every university and say, look, this is what working with Wikimedia can do in terms of your students. Um, I, I, I think it's so compelling hearing it from a student who's experienced that and seen the benefits. Um, and obviously you've made an amazing advocate um, for Wikimedia's work in education and, and I feel like I should, um, even though he's been uh, slamming me on the chat, I feel I should name check Ewan McAndrew here, who's the Wikimedia in residence at the University of Edinburgh, who, who recruited and, and supported Hannah. Thank you so much. I'm um, gonna move on to the next lightning talk before we take a break. Um, and this is our very own Dr. Sarah Thomas, um, who, oh, we've got a, quite a, a Scottish theme to, to this first half. <laughs> um, it, it clearly is a, it's a programme of two halves and this is the Scottish half. Um, Dr. Sarah Thomas, who is the Scotland programme coordinator, who's going to talk about Scott's wiki I believe over to you Sarah. Thank you. Are we sitting comfortably? Then we'll begin. Once upon a time because all good stories start with a once upon a time there was a stushy on reddit over the state of the Scots wiki. Wait actually that's not right because this story starts well before then. The Scots language has four main dialects and 10 sub dialects. Its history starts 1400 years ago and at one point around 70% of the population of Scotland spoke Scots. It was the language of law and of letters. But shifts in power and religion and other things besides resulted in Scots being seen as just not speaking properly. Intelligible, but not of the intelligent. On 23rd of June, 2005, a Wikipedia got started in Scots, which gave Scots speakers yet another place where they needed to explain that yes, it is a language, no, it's not slang, and no, it's not just an accent. Early articles included the Scots Parliament, the United Kingdom, Scotland cities, chocolate, botany, biology, cryptozoology, and Scrooge McDuck. What does it take to keep working in a minority language? What does it take to build a minority language Wikipedia, especially one where memory has faded to the extent that some folk don't even recognize it as a language, where the attitude to that language, even in your own country, isn't exactly always positive. Scots Wiki started off small, and by the standards of English Wiki is still very small indeed. It was 1,000 articles by February 2006 and 5,000 by 2010. By August 2020, it stood at 57,739. One consequence of the international press fallout from the aforementioned Reddit Stushi is that around about 36% of that either has been or will be deleted, but we'll come on to that later. What does it take to keep going? The story of Wikipedia, as always, is a story of dedicated humans. 
because this is the tale of the little wiki that could. This is a tale of dedicated humans. 2020 entered many phrases into our vocabulary. Keys, wallet, phone, mask. Takeaway pints. Panic buying toilet roll. Scottish distillery starts selling hand sanitizer. You're on mute. Armchair epidemiologist. But one thing I never thought I'd say at the beginning of 2020 was today I help coordinate an international press response. But so it goes. And whilst many of the usual suspects used the Reddit stushy to poke fun, to pull down, to sneer, and sometimes shamefully to humiliate, there were dedicated humans doing good work before the dust had even thought about settling. One admin opened up a Reddit AMA. Meta threads were created, options evaluated, community consulted, editathons created, new policies created. Improvements to infrastructure implemented. Trolls dealt with and vandals dealt to both. Criteria for article deletion agreed. 10,000 gone already, more to go. Discord server populated. Facebook group created. Partnerships built with Scots language expert. Articles improved and written. Skills developed. Humans, beautiful humans doing the work to build something rather than tear something down. If there was a problem with the Scots Wiki, it was not enough humans to provide oversight. After the initial rush of interest, it started to settle down a little bit and it's still not many, but it's more than it was before. And it's become a rallying point. Here's a thing, a broken thing. Can we help fix it? Because we can. So we're digging in for the long term. And the lesson here is this, that there are different ways to approach what you do in life. You can choose to tear things down or you can choose to build things up. You can choose to throw stones or you can choose to build foundations. You can choose to scream aimlessly into the vast expanse of the internet void where no one really hears you, where we are all endlessly disappearing and endlessly replaced, where immediacy displaces truth, where the real person behind the keyboard fades till they are but a memory, until they're just a meme, till the signifier and the signified are so far divorced that all that's left is spectacle, till all that's left is noise, till all that's left is sound and fury signifying nothing. But there are real people behind keyboards and there is always work to be done. There is great value to contribution. There is hope still in collaboration. And there are humans, beautiful humans, making something bigger than themselves. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, I don't know if it's the wine, but that, that's made me feel a little bit emotional. Um, I think just that reminder that um, everybody who edits any of the Wikipedia projects is a human being at the end of you know, at the other side of a computer or a keyboard, um, and uh, yeah, I think we're I think we're all sort of feeling feeling that very strongly. Um, and obviously, we we have experienced this before, but Sarah's um, gifted storytelling really brings to life um, her message. So thank you so much. Um, thank you to all the speakers. We're going to have a short break now. Um, while I just go, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> we had a planned a planned short break, um, and then we're going to come back. Um, please don't go away. We've got three. Um, well, we've got my cat here to look at for a start, um, but we also have. Have three fantastic um, additional speakers. We've got Aaron Morris from Mentimon. We've got Stella Wisdom from the British Library, as as heard on uh, Radio Four today. Um, and we have Leanne Wilson um, from the uh, not from, but uh, talking about the Cornish Wikipedia. Um, so thanks everybody. See you um, promptly at six twenty for more talks. Cheers. Jonathan, I've just seen your message in the chat. The, the cat can be introduced. Simi needs no introduction to my uh, to my colleagues. Um, this is this is Simi, Sydney, um, but Simi for short. Um, and uh, everybody knows her tail. She's a very fluffy cat. 
and she's particularly clingy at the moment so she's decided that I can't you know type or write notes um which is really helpful um <laughs> sorry. thanks cool. Lucy and uh, hi Simi <laughs> The, uh, the reason she's, the nickname is Simi, Simi is a, a rescue cat and we got her when my, um, my my son Rafe wasn't quite two and her name was Sydney but he he couldn't really say Sydney so she became Simi and that stuck really so anyway I mean Sydney's a well just felt like a slightly odd name for a female cat but um, there you go and she's 16 now <laughs> anyway she needs a lot of attention. I'm going to mute myself now. <laughs> okay, unmuting again. Um, to say just in the remaining three minutes, feel free to unmute yourself and chat. Um, you don't need to, to sit in silence. Um, that is fine. It is a party after all. Okay, Lucy, here's a word from me, Rob Nelson, to say, um, I recognise your name quite well. Um, are you a Wikimedia person or Wikipedia person? Have I had an email from you in the past? You have probably... Um, I mean, the very fact that you're here suggests that you've had an email from me. Um, oh. So I'm the Chief Executive of Wikimedia UK. And we're the national charity for, for the movement. So um, Wikipedia is the website and Wikimedia is the movement and community that sits behind, underneath, to one side, um, around the website. Um, and there are a number of organisations, including the Wikimedia Foundation, which is based in San Francisco, Wikimedia UK, based here in lots of other chapters. So Wikimedia France, Wikimedia Austria, Wikimedia New York City, etc. Right. So you've probably received, I, I suspect it's very likely that you've received an email from me. <laughs> Once we see a, a double barreled name like Crompton Ree, that, uh, that sticks with you, you know? And um, yeah, I guess like that I was a, a combination of two main names when you got married. So I, I was Crompton and my husband was Reed, um, and we both became Crompton Reed. Um, and I, I think, I could be wrong, but I think we might be the only Crompton Reeds. And you're still I mean, going together? You're still together? <laughs> yes, we are. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we are. Yes, he's uh, dealing with the children <laughs> in another room. Yes. <laughs> well, I've had two wives, um, Lucy, and uh, the first one left me in 1987, or we parted in a great battle in 1987. Yeah, a sushi, you might say. <laughs> and you the second one left me. Barrel name. <laughs> Sorry. You should have a triple barrel name by now. <laughs> I, well, I've never, I've never been drawn to double barreled names, let alone triple barreled ones. But the second one left me in September this year, beginning of September, and we're still the best of friends. That's an extraordinary thing. Well, that is good. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I can speak as a double barreled, and having listened to the Scots, which was very entertaining, I was thinking, well, there's another tribe here because our name is Reese Jones, spelled mm -hmm. properly. Yes. yes. <laughs> And, and I adopted my husband's name when we married because it was rather a long time ago and life got very complicated if you didn't. They didn't want to give you driving licenses and passports and all that <laughs> stuff if you had a different name. And my, my maiden name was actually rather nice. But I, I'll tell you what really struck me today, Lucy, and I really appreciate deciding we were going to join you. Uh, we've only given money. We, we, just, we just give you money. We just give you money. <laughs> but I'm listening. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, you know what? We, we do all sorts of stuff. We, we run charities and we write and we run businesses and I haven't actually edited anything. And I'm sitting here thinking, why the hell haven't you ever edited anything? <laughs> um, it's definitely not too late. It's, it's just amazing. I'm, that's really what's, what struck me with this session. So thank you for this party. Oh, and I also would just like to add that I met Jimmy Wales a few years ago when he was a guest speaker at a Chartered Management Institute thing. Mm. And it was just so refreshing to meet him because he is so 
unassuming and so relaxed and in a black tie do with lots of the great and the good he was a great guy and it was tremendous to meet him so but anyway there are two things one is happy birthday secondly great to organize a party and thirdly thank you for giving me a kick and i will oh, start well, that's over wonderful <laughs> we've recruited a new editor and um and particularly a, a woman editor so that is that is fantastic um and and on a on a serious note if you um please do visit our website um tra editing training events um are often listed there or get in touch with us if you need a bit of help and support we're always mm really um keen to support and develop new editors so i'm really really pleased if this has inspired you to do that um it's um 21 minutes past six by my by my watch so i think we're going to kick off with the next set of lightning talks so i'm pretty sure aaron is here aaron morris who um has been delivering some amazing work with schools in um in anglesey and other parts of wales um and he's going to talk about that now, so over to Aaron, if you are there. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Aaron Morris. I work for Minteri Eighth Morn. Um, we are one of 22 other language initiatives in Wales. Um, we try to ensure that Wales continues to be a stronghold for the Welsh language, and um, we provide opportunities and experiences that encourage all um, of the island's residents to use the Welsh language with confidence and pride in the communities um, and by doing so enabling them to develop their personal and social skills and ensure equal opportunities to use the language. Um, my lightning talk is going to be about the, the Welsh Wiki's involvement with education and its effect in the classroom. So my journey is going to resemble a kind of domino game, really, or a domino effect. So the big challenge um, at the beginning of my wiki journey was to find um, a way into schools. Now, this was nearly four years ago, and there was a certain stigma involving wiki. Um, you know, you were hearing staff and children saying things like, ah, you can't use it, you can write anything on it, it's not reliable. Um, and I think that was the first major challenge, in a way, to raise awareness of what a wiki was to begin with and on to uh, what Wikipedia uh, stands for, uh, of really background information. So that helped because it opened doors for us um, in the primary and the, the secondary schools um, by working on the digital competence framework. So the digital competence framework um, is the first element of the new uh, curriculum for Wales. To be, made, uh, to be made available. So digital competence is the set of skills, knowledge and attitudes that enable uh, the confident, creative and critical use of technologies and systems. So using devices and handling information, uh, creating and editing, communicating, transacting, being safe and responsible online, so in a way, it ticked all, all of the boxes. Uh, we knew it and the schools knew it as well. So that was our big break. Um, and so I created my workshop uh, to weave in into, into the classroom's um, curriculum. So that was the first uh, domino to fall. Um, and so that opened the door for us to work on the Welsh uh, baccalaureate, the Welsh BAC, uh, which is a program of activities uh, pupils need to compete uh, to complete alongside their A level um, to get the to get their qualification. So we targeted the the community challenge Herregaminet in Welsh, um, the community challenge module, which is an opportunity for the pupils to share their knowledge um, or what they've learned with me, and then to go out into the community and teach people how to edit uh, wiki. Uh, this could be a, a club uh, outside uh, of school or a wiki lunch club uh, in the school itself. Um, and another domino effect was the, the National Library of Wales. So thank goodness for the National Library of Wales and thank goodness for Jason Evans. When we began with the, the Welsh back, um, we had a structure to the lessons, um, a seven, a seven uh, session uh, structure in a way, uh, editing, coding, uh, research, but we wanted a project to focus on. Um, so at the start, we did a lot with um, Anglesey history. 
Um, but because of the National Library's involvement, we had um, something to focus on each year, whether it was um, Wiki Llen, so that's Wiki Literature, um, focusing on, on Welsh literature, uh, Wiki Addysg, which is Wiki Education in Welsh, and Wiki Pex. So it was a great opportunity, really, to work with the library uh, and up our, our status, really, because every, every school wants to work with the National Library. Um, and it was a very good, it was a very good selling point for the schools as well. So working with the library um, gave pupils uh, new opportunities and it looked pretty impressive on the on the old CV. Um, so unfortunately for us, uh, COVID-19 came to, uh, knocking on our doors. Um, we had to stop what we were doing and we had to adapt. So ironically, uh, because of COVID, um, we have now uh, a new array of uh, tutorial videos uh, by the pupils for other pupils. Uh, which explains uh, the entire process of um, editing on uh, Wikipedia. Um, so those are on, on the Welsh Wikipedia at the moment. Um, we, we've created our own podcasts, uh, amongst other things. Um, of course, there are um, obviously difficulties we need to overcome, but what's great is that Wiki is accessible. Um, so the pupils can work, it, work at, uh, on it at home. Uh, they can create new articles. So... When it comes to you know the, the, the you know the project for the future, the, yes, the future is unclear, but we have established the fact that there is a structure there now. Um, there, there are loads of articles that have been created by by young people, and um, in my opinion, uh, in my opinion, the Welsh Wiki is getting stronger and stronger. So hopefully, there will be more dominoes uh, falling pretty soon. Um, so, people with happies, happy birthday, Wikipedia, and Yechavaur, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, I'm always blown away to hear about the work that's going on in schools in Wales. It's just um, really fantastic and great to hear that um, some of the school pupils have been making videos. Um, I haven't seen those yet, so I'm going to go and look. Even if I don't understand the language, it'll be great to see that. Uh, well, I won't understand language, I have to be clear. Um, but thank you again. And um, I want to move on swiftly to Stella Wisdom from the British Library, um, who is actually um, the first organisation that Wikimedia UK partnered with on a Wikimedian in residence and now has a new residency project um, nearly a decade later, I think. So I'm handing over to Stella now. Oh, thanks, Lucy. Um, I'm a bit daunted after all those amazing presentations before me, especially the storybook one that Sarah did. That was that was amazing. Um, I'm not going to use slides because I don't want to overrun. Um, so I'm going to talk about a bit about the work that we have done and also looking forward to the future. Um, so I'm a digital curator at the British Library. For those of you who've not visited the British Library, we are the National Library of the UK, um, but there are also, as mentioned, National Library of Scotland and National Library of Wales and so um, a lot of what I do works with the other national libraries and legal deposit libraries in the UK um, as well. Um, really um, I was going to start off is so we were one of the first organizations to have a wiki wikipedia in residence andrew gray um, and andrew used to sit have the desk behind my desk um, when he did his residency in 2012 2013 so even though i wasn't directly um, much involved in his residency then i used to observe and learn a lot from what andrew was doing because i shared the same part of the office with him um, and he had a profoundly positive effect on the british library so we've spoken a little about um, perceptions of wikipedia how they were um, kind of 12 10 years ago still some suspicion about the accuracy and reliability um, andrew gray when he was our resident wikipedian really did help um, tackle some of those maybe negative stereotypes or understandings about Wikipedia and really enthused curators and collection staff at the British Library to want to um, not only hold events and do and do initiatives to edit Wiki, Wikipedia um, but also to put collections on Wikimedia Commons and um, edit Wikidata and, and work like that. Um, I want to give some shout outs. I know I'm not the, the only librarian here. Um, so Lucy mentioned that I spoke for Radio 4 earlier today. Um, the interviewer on that I felt was trying to pitch me a little bit as libraries versus Wikipedia and I was having none of it. Um, so I, I held my ground because if anything, I find the opposite that, that librarians and archivists and museum staff um, 
mostly want to collaborate and work with Wikipedia and Wikimedia platforms um, to add add material and 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 to kind of contribute in an active way. So, and I wanted to give some thanks here. Um, I I'm always inspired by what what's been happening at National Library of Wales and at Edinburgh University and the protests and suffragettes pro project especially. Um, so I know there's a couple of folks um, from that project here today. So pre pre lockdown, um, I have helped run some editathon events at the British Library um, on on site, old school events um, with my colleague Polly Russell, who's a food historian. Um, I've helped run some food history editathon events, um, but I'd never um, been involved in online Wikipedia editathons, and I've really learned a lot about them from the protests and suffragettes project. Um, they, they really kind of helped me. So then in November, um, just gone, when I worked with um, Leeds Libraries and Leeds Museum and Galleries, um, I was able to apply some of what I'd learned from protests and suffragettes um, to help the folks in Leeds out when, when they held um, their online editathon about women in Leeds. Um, and it's even inspired me. I mean, I've become a member of Wikimedia UK, so I, I now feel that I wear two hats. I feel that I wear digital curator librarian at the British Library hat, and I feel that um, I feel like I've become one of you. Um, and I have, I'm, I'm pleased that I've been creating a few Wikipedia articles myself um, and having discussions on talk pages and I've really improved my confidence over the last year um, in, in kind of wiki, Wikipedia editing myself. Um, looking forward to the future, um, I'm very pleased to announce that hot off the press, literally um, only a week ago we've had a memorandum of understanding, so a legal document signed between Wikimedia UK um, and the British Library and this is that we're going to host another residency so so um watch this space for details i can't i can't give too many more details at the moment because of logistics and covid and paperwork and bureaucracy have been slowing things down but we are going to have um, a new um, wikimedian at the british library and i want to give thanks to the Eccles center for american studies which is um a charity within the British Library um, and they've um, funded half of this post so um, I, I feel like I should give them some thanks because they're pay, paying half the salary of this post so watch this space um, for news on that. Um, what I'm very much hoping the new Wikimedian is going to do is to help um, my colleagues at the British Library um, engage with um, some of some of the other Wikimedia platforms, so Wikisource and Wikidata especially. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to National Library of Scotland um, because their amazing um, Scottish chapbooks project um, that they've had on Wikisource, um, I've been super, super impressed by that. And a bit like how I've learned from protests and suffragettes, um, I've been learning from NLS. Um, uh, and Gavin at NLS um, has been very generous and spoken, um, given two talks to my colleagues at the British Library explaining um, what NLS did with, with their collections using Wikisource. And I've got one of my colleagues, Tom Derrick, um, and he's um, doing a pilot study testing um, some um, printed books in Bengali. We've got a, a really important collection of historic um, books um, printed in Indian languages and Tom's doing an experiment with putting those up on Wikisource and he's um, engaging with um, communities for the transcription of those. Um, I also, so I've got great hopes for the new Wikimedian residency um, and want to work more with communities um, and try to be an advocate for libraries and, and Wikipedia as best I can. So that's it from me. Um, I've put a link in the chat to a blog post. So I've not used any slides. I can paste it in again, but I've tried to be generous to my colleagues who've done lots of engagement. So this is definitely not just me. Um, I've got lots of colleagues across the library. Um, some of them are well known like Polly Russell, but others catalogers um, during lockdown um, where lots of catalogers have, have not been able to work on site with physical items. Um, no one's asked them to do it but they've been editing wiki data off their own bat and i've been so impressed by that um and and so i've been wanting to give credit to the the kind of um quiet catalogers that are at the british library um editing wiki data as as much as people organizing big events and that so that's it from me thanks Thank you so much, Stella. Um, I'm not going to stay on the on the mic long because um, I've got a slightly wailing two-year-old in the background. Um, but but really inspiring, um, great stuff to hear about the British Library 
um, collaboration, which we at Wikimedia UK, as I'm sure you know, are really excited about. Um, thanks again. And also, yeah, thanks for really flying the flag for that collaboration between libraries and Wiki that you did on, on Radio 4, um, despite them trying to pit, pit the, the two against each other. We work so much with libraries, so, so really, um, you, you made that point really, really well. Um, so last but very much not least, I'm going to hand the mic to Leanne Wilson, who's going to be talking about the Cornish Wikipedia. So um, over to you, Leanne. Hi, thanks very much. I uh, hope you can all see the uh, just couple of slides I've got. So, um, hello, my name is Leanne Wilson. Uh, I'm Cornish and with a huge love of languages, it was inevitable that I got involved with my own culture and the Cornish language revival. I came to Cornish Wikipedia as with any language to read around topics, get a handle on specific uh, vocabulary and phrasing. And when it came to Cornish, there were fantastically helpful pages on some subjects and others without a page at all. Uh, a mentor reminded me that in the small and drastically underfunded Cornish language world, if you want something doing, you'd better do it yourself. Uh, some quick context is necessary for the fairly special situation of Cornish Wikipedia and why our community finds Wikipedia such a valuable and vital resource. Uh, in the late 19th century, Canuick was down to the last glowing embers and had all but vanished as a community language. But the revival of the language started in almost the same instant and took off rather rapidly. By 2021, Cornish is a small but growing language with perhaps a couple of thousand speakers of varying levels of fluency. We have an older and generally less technologically savvy community and a high ratio of learners to fluent speakers. Due to the relatively short time it's been since the start of the revival and the low amount of surviving written material, uh, Canuick is lacking some standardized vocabulary in some areas, particularly in specialized fields. However, the internet has been a real boon to the language bringing new tools, enabling democratization of resources and connecting learners from across the globe. One of the resources we've set up organized around our Wikipedia work is KernaWiki, which is a Facebook group for budding Cornish editors, currently at just under 100 members. Um, it's a place which allows us to encourage and support each other through editing Cornish Wikipedia, as well as host editathons and share our work. Some of the benefits are that it allows us to share small vocabulary lists for any neologisms that are needed when writing new articles. Uh, you can see here, there I am introducing people to some words I've needed to come up with to discuss wrestling in a Wikipedia page that I wrote this year. Uh, it allows us to update our small community and allows them to easily be notified of new content in the language that suits their interests. Uh, a small underfunded language like ours has a small output in traditional publishing. And so finding Kernuic material in your particular topics of interest can otherwise be quite difficult. Uh, it also allows newer learners and less confident writers to just edit away and share their work and get quick and helpful feedback, even in a small community that is generally less glued to their screens. What's been very successful for us this year is a now yearly event I've started called Quickie Rymo, which challenges Cornish speakers to write 30 new articles in the 30 days of November. Uh, it started just as a challenge to myself, but last year we had eight participants, uh, three of whom completed the full challenge and uh, 123 articles were written inside the month. Now that might not sound huge, but for a language with just over 4,000 articles total, that's quite an impact. Uh, our members worked on themes from women to science fiction, as well as working on the list of a thousand vital articles needed in each Wikipedia language. Not only are Wikipedia and the challenge important to our community, but it helps us as individuals. Over the course of each November, I've been able to tangibly feel my Cornish improving. And of course, the stronger in our language we become, the stronger our language becomes as a whole. We're creating something that is a form of self-improvement, but also allows us to document preserve, grow, and propagate Canuick. We really have the sense of building a reference tool with Wikipedia that is vital to a language like ours. Cornish Wikipedia is a cycle of nourishment for Canuick and one that is like our language, small, but striving and thriving. Thank you very much. That's all I have from, uh, thank you to Wikipedia for having me today and for you all for listening. 
I'm available at my talk page on at Gwick or Frank anytime if you'd like to discuss anything. And happy birthday, Wikipedia, Pembla of Lowen. Thank you so much, Leanne. Um, really um, brilliant stuff. I think a lot of us were, were really impressed by the number of articles that people that, that quite a small number of participants produced in a, in a short space of time. That's some dedication. But something you just said really struck me about actually the process of writing those articles is improving your Cornish skills. And I think that's actually not really something that, that I've thought about before um, when people are, are writing you know, in their indigenous language but they also speak English and how actually writing on, on their, their that um, uh, indigenous language Wikipedia can actually improve those skills and, so, and as well as sharing that knowledge with everybody else so um, amazing stuff thank you. Um, we have run a little bit over time only 11 minutes not bad I think um, but we are going to be drawing to a close now. So it remains for me to thank all of our speakers. I think everyone will agree they've just been fantastic. I wonder, in fact, whether maybe we could all unmute ourselves and maybe just do a little round of applause for all the um, amazing speakers, the six lightning talk. And <laughs> Thank you. That round of applause, it's really both for speaking, but also actually, sorry, the cat's now trying to get to my pizza. What's the world coming to? Um, just for um, all the work that sits underneath those talks, a huge amount of commitment to opening up access to knowledge for everybody. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, we will keep this Zoom call open for a little while. I think probably till about half past seven, if people want to stay around and chat and um, we'll stop the recording so you can feel free to, to relax and, um, and chat and network informally if you'd like to. Um, but on a, on a more formal note, I really appreciate you taking the time on a Friday evening to attend this event, um, to show your appreciation for Wikipedia, um, to raise a glass to Wikipedia's 20th birthday. I think it's a really um, wonderful moment that we can all be proud of. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday.